Welcome to the show once again. I'm Arba Kumsen. Opinions are divided over a video footage in which the president is seen giving out gifts to his supporters during a recent campaign of the Greater Accra region. The footage, which has already gone viral and generated various reactions, is not very clear to the naked eye and does not show exactly what the president handed out. But there are suggestions that he was distributing money. Let's first take a look at the video and we will return with some reactions. The video was captured on a mobile phone by someone positioned on the first floor of one of the buildings along the main Akosokai thoroughfare. The president's convoy is seen moving slowly along the street from left to right, surrounded at all times by a crowd of cheering traders. As the president's vehicle approaches, the camera person zooms in to reveal the president dressed in a white cap and black polo shirt with the JM logos in white on his sleeve and in green on his chest. He is seen with his torso sticking out of the sunroof, shaking hands and interacting with members of the crowd as they mill around his black 4x4 vehicle. About a minute and seven seconds into the video, the vehicle comes to a halt in the middle of the road. The president is then seen communicating with some specific member of the milling crowd. He appears to be asking a question which the individual answers by vigorously waving their hand. The president then turns and reaches down into the vehicle. He straightens up and with one hand still in the vehicle, turns back towards the crowd and points three times at someone who cannot be seen in the shot. A voice is heard asking in chief, is he about to give them money? The president is then seen reaching into the vehicle again and handing something to an unidentified person in the crowd around the vehicle. He repeats the action a second time again handing an unidentified item to another person. Then he identifies a third person in the crowd and beckons to them. He brings out more of the light-colored material that looks the size of a mobile phone roughly. He then lets go of the person's hand, transfers the material from his left hand to his right and hands it to the individual. Well, uh, that video has sparked several reactions, not least from the NDC's main opponents, the New Patriotic Party, which is questioning the president's move. MP for Iowa Southwest Wagon, Chairman Tenge Jakon, maintains the president could not have been given out anything other than cash. He spoke earlier today on the AM show. His Excellency is different from all of us. He is different from you? He is the first gentleman of the land. He is the fountain of honor. When I saw it, I thought that there was something wrong. But you see, if the NDC and Okite, people like him think that it is okay, so be it. That his excellency will stop a car and take money, give, take money from somebody and begin to give it out. No, he didn't. No, let, let's get it right. He didn't give the money out. Not to, to, to he call somebody and give. He call somebody. I don't. Know. That is what well, I. Well, I asked a question. I asked somebody on the campaign trail, and they said that I think when the convoy was going, somebody was. I think fell off mm -hmm. and I think he noticed it mm -hmm. so I had that he tried to uh, doesn't you have detail uh -huh. that's what I'm asking doesn't you have detail but it was in the heat of the campaign doesn't you have detail it, uh, I said that there are the good book of the Christians is all things are lawful it is not everything that is experienced Mr. Mr. Jacob, aren't we being hypocritical about this oh the good people who are sitting and watching must make up their minds. Do you agree that the president was not sharing money on his campaign trail? What, what, what was he doing? <laughs> no. did he, did he give no, I'm asking you two different questions. I said, did the president, His Excellency the President, was it a place he gave out? No. Was it a place he gave out? No. Oh, yeah, come on. Well, the Chief of Staff, Julius Debra, has mounted a strong defense of the President, saying the NDC flag bearer is experienced and does not carry cash on him. Speaking on the Joy FM Super Morning Show, Mr. Debra indicated that the fact that the video showed uh, he was handing out something that appears to look like Pippa doesn't mean it was money, adding it is possible that it could have been a leaflet. 
do you that everything is possible? We don't look at the feeling, faith, and genuine images that appears to be true. But I'm yet to say it. I, but me, President Mahama, I believe sincerely that he wouldn't, you know, they would go to marketplace and throw him money. He's a very, a very um, experienced person. It, and and it does look like he reaches into the vehicle three times and hands some paper, some paper-looking objects to at least three people. So it, it's also possible it could be a leaflet. It wasn't my friend until he was in the appointment. But having worked with him closely, it's probably before he jumped. And I believe that under no circumstance will he be in a splashing throwing money around. Most of the times, that's something that people have not taken notice. Presidents, they don't carry money on them. Any time the president walks, he doesn't carry cash on him. And usually either with the ABC or, you know, some of the protocol officers. And I, they, they tell us that that is the tradition from the generation that presidents do not carry cash. So I would be very, very surprised uh, for President Mahama to have cash. So that's the Chief of Staff, Julius Deborah, there. Well, he has been continuing a tour of the Upper West region as part of the NDC's 2016 campaign. As you may be aware, he's been meeting traditional authorities and party supporters. Today, he's scheduled to address leaders of the party in that region. Correspondent Rafiq Salam joins us on the line with more. Rafiq, hello to you. Hello, Araba. Now, uh, the Chief of Staff certainly has his hands full. What's he up to today? Um, today, he has program uh, that has been uh, this seminar uh, organized by uh, for extended uh, executives of the NDC where he's came to address them and I'm going to be uh, by uh, the deputy uh, secretary general secretary of the party Kukwaido, Alban Manakis Korkwabin and also uh, Asidu Anketia and so uh, definitely they have been about the party how to respect it as now that they have been able to land their manifesto uh, the best thing, according to our students, is yeah, for them to arm uh, the food soldiers to know what contained on that manifesto uh, so they will go into their hinterlands and uh, tell the people they end this effort. So now let's listen to what our students here has been speaking to the media about. Having gone to the field, we are training now the regional campaign team and the regional elections task force to empower them to be able to plan and coordinate the campaign very well and at each step monitor progress achieved where the problems are coming out and then how to uh, deal with the problems before we get to the election day and then how to coordinate effective election day activities to ensure that the votes the people are surely going to deliver to us in our powers can be protected by us the people would have done their duty by voting for us but it is our duty to protect the votes till they are declared and we, 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 we get our our victory and achieve our 11 11 and 79 percent what kind of protection are you talking about how to be vigilant and, and monitor the election process from morning to close of votes, declaration of results at the polling station, following through to monitor the collation and watch the transposition of now let's stay a while longer with the chief of staff because he has been reacting to MPP running mate Dr. Mohamed Balmia's challenge thrown to the NDC to respond to his claims about the state of the economy. The MPP Wednesday challenged the NDC to avail its vice presidential can or its running mate Kwesi Emisa Arthur to respond to 170 statements and claims postulated by Dr. Balmia at a lecture themed the state of the Ghana economy, a foundation of concrete or straw. Well, Mr. Misa Arthur has been responding in bits to the lecture delivered by Dr. Balmia, arguing that the claims were untrue. Only recently, at the NDC's manifesto launch, he indicated that he was advised not to respond to Dr. Balmia. However, in their quest to aid and fast-track government's response, the MPP compiled a list of 170 statements on Dr. Balmia's presentation. But Chief of Staff Julius Debra says the NDC will not kowtow to the MPP's challenge. If you are in competition with somebody and you allow them to coach you or to direct you on what to do, you must know you are losing. 
And so we've told our people, we don't necessarily need to follow or copy what he says. Go to the ground, talk to the people who are going to vote for you. Go and plead with them. Tell them the reason why they should vote for you. Don't sit in a crowd and not be responding to what you think I've been here. Unfortunately, I was still hoping that I would be seeing a lot of activities by some of our competitors. The president is, I've been here almost three or four days, and it's like, you know, and so we like it that way. He can throw the challenge. It's up to us to either follow him or to, you know, not to follow him and go pay our plan. Our plan is that go back to the masses and explain the policy. For example, one of the reasons why I came is to, you see, when we talk about political campaigning, one important ingredient is to have a manifesto. And the manifesto basically is just a uh, document of an intent. Instead of probably working hard to come out with your document of intent for the people to look at it and in a classroom challenge to us to come and be respond to press conferences. I will never advise our people to follow up. I will advise our people to go to the front, go to the teams, tell them about what we've done and what we've been doing in the year of the mandate. So our Chief of Staff, Julius Debrat there. Let's speak to a Deputy Director of Communications for the MPP, Mike Okwe Jr., for some more on this. Uh, good afternoon to you. Yes, a very good afternoon to you too. So why this insistence that the NDC responds to this challenge you've thrown them? I mean, you heard the Chief of Staff. He says they're not obliged to respond. Yes, um, they are not obliged to respond. But the only reason why we've asked them to respond, if they can respond, is simply because right after Dr. Baumier's uh, presentation on the dire state of crisis in our economy, they refuted the claims and said they were not true. We had the uh, vice president himself say he was going to respond. And later on, there was an apparent uh, allegation that he had set a certain date that ended up not being true, that he had said he was going to respond. In fact, he's even said recently that he's going to respond to Dr. Baumia piece by piece, i.e. poco a poco, on political platforms because this is a political issue. That is where, for example, we in the MPP and Nana Dukankwe Kofado beg to differ. We say that this is an economic situation saying that the country is in a crisis. So if you are saying that is not the case, then we think the right and most appropriate person, the caliber of the vice president, who himself was a former governor of the Bank of Ghana, is in charge of the Economic Management Committee, should come and tell us the real state of affairs vis-a-vis -vis what Dr. Baumia has said, for example. And among the other things that Dr. Baumia said, one thing they've tried to tout is this average of 6% GDP, which we know is of no consequence, bearing in mind that the NPP had what we call a gradient rise from 39 all the way to 4.2, 4.8, 5 5.6, moving on slowly until it apexed at 8.6. Mr. So uh, okay, uh, okay, Junior, uh, yeah. of what use really will a debate now be? Because uh, the NEC argues that with barely two months to the elections, you would want to be on the ground strengthening your support base. You're on the ground doing what? Because we are talking about the economy. They try to rather bamboozle people with things like, oh, we are doing infrastructure here and infrastructure there. In that area, for example, we have been able to show both in the representations by Dr. Baumia and Wache Jacon, that they have inflated the prices. So what is happening is that even under infrastructure, what we should get, we should have actually gotten three for one. That is one area. But we are also telling them that the economy is weak. The president, as late as yesterday, told us at the UN that we have a strong and resilient economy. Of course, he could not have told us that if um, Mr. Or Dr. Emisa Atta, the Vice President, His Excellency Emisa Atta, responds to the issue of our economy. So that is what we want. Yes, the election can be in two days, but the most important thing for an election is the state of the economy. So we are asking them to kindly provide some information so that Ghanaians will be able to make a decision 
based on what has come out. But until they refute what Dr. Baumia said, we are saying it is the truth and stands as the truth. That is the issue. Thanks. And that's uh, Michael Quay Jr. He is a Deputy Director of Education. Uh, I beg your pardon, Deputy Director of Communications for the opposition MPP. Well, still on the MPP, the party's flag bearer, Nene Kufuado, has been continuing his campaign in the Greater Accra region, and specifically in Adar and its environs. The MPP leader has been promising the people there of his intention to construct a sea defense wall in Adar and neighboring coastal communities. Unfortunately for the MPP leader, the usual teeming crowd which uh, characterizes his campaign rallies was absent. Join us is uh, Latif Idris is traveling with the MPP campaign team. He joins us on the line now. Uh, Latif, we have seen pictures of the rally and clearly it did not attract a huge crowd. Is it likely that the area where you, uh, um, you have supporters, the supporters there are predominantly NDC? Uh, certainly, Alba. Um, but currently, let me say that we are in the segment of security. Before coming here, we were in the Adan constituency proper when I understood the case for on the farmer chief of the other traditional area, who is also the president of the Greater Regional House of Peace. Now, Nanado just made the point very blunt. He told the chief that over the years, the MPP have come to realize that whenever Ghana goes to the polls, uh, they do not get massive votes from Adan and its environs. So this time around, he pleaded with the chief and the people in that community to vote massively for him. Now, this was evident at the rally organized in Adan where we had just a handful of, I mean, party people coming there to tear up the leader of the new patriotic party. However, as a city, now we are in uh, yet another constituency uh, where party executives uh, the women's organized, national women's organizer of the MCP just finished addressing the crowd that are gathered here, also listening to the speeches of the various leaders who are joining Nanabo in this campaign to Alba. Now, let me also mention that Nanabo just didn't make a promise of constructing a city based war. We are also promising the people of setting up uh, soul and then vegetable factories in giving the Lord to become the next president of the Republic of Many thanks, uh, Latif Idris is uh, traveling with the MPP campaign team and bringing us uh, that update there. To the eastern region now, where the vice president, Kwesi Misa Arthur, has begun a three-day campaign tour. He's been meeting, among others, traditional leaders, particularly Zongo chiefs and imams there. Regional correspondent Kofi Sian is our man on the ground, and he joins us on the telephone. Hello, Kofi. Hello, Alba. Uh, bring us up to speed on the president, the vice president's tour there. Well, just as you said, uh, this is part of the campaign bill of the NDC. And the vice president uh, this morning was in Nkoko. That is where he started uh, the program. So he met with the Zongo chiefs and imams. And there he talked about the fact that the NDC has done a lot for the people of Nkoko, especially in the areas of food uh, construction, in the areas of keeping up education uh, infrastructure what have you, that is what the Vice President has been saying, and he says that even though uh, in such places like in Koko, they do not vote for the NDC, but uh, the government has done enough for them by putting up uh, infrastructure projects in, in that area. So let's listen to the Vice President. <laughs> What do you want to and say? I'm saying then I call and then I will see. A private bar, they are a chap. They say that they come in there, one more to my one more answer, one more so, if I follow. The people sitting there, they are two and a half, one more to Hana, and so on. No one, 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 so 
So that's Vice President uh, Kwesi Mr. Arthur appealing to uh, the people in the eastern region to vote for the NDC. Let's turn our attention on the flag bearer of the Progressive People's Party, Dr. Papa Kwesi Indum, who has been addressing students and lecturers in Ejusu in the Ashanti region. Dr. Indum says the best approach to solve the developmental needs of the country is tackling the basic needs of their citizenry. Now, in an election year, voter expectations are usually higher than non-election years, and this year is no different. A new survey report on voter expectations uh, has revealed most voters in Ghana want government spending checked. The respondents insist the next government should focus on cutting expenditure and reducing debt levels. The survey was conducted by civil society group Imani Ghana, which uh, launched the report at a forum in Accra today. Roman Aqua was at that forum. He joins us with more uh, in studio here. Hello, Raymond. Hello. Now, first of all, how was this report conducted? Or so the survey, how was it conducted? So, Imani actually spoke to 10,030 Ghanaians across the various regions. Indeed, they selected two major towns in every single region to conduct this survey. The understanding is that they wanted to know the most important issues and the priorities, the thing that political parties should focus their manifestos and their policies on so that it will be their needs driven and it will be based on the people's wants that the policies will be drawn. All right. So why is this clamor, uh, you know, for reduction in government expenditure? Does it have anything to do with, you know, corruption? Yes. Um, Imani's um, head of research indicated clearly that many of the people believe that we take so much money and yet we don't use it for the projects they are supposed to be used for. So in order to reduce the corruption, in order to not make it look like you are actually borrowing too much to also go into projects which end up being corruption related, cut down the expenditure so that it won't affect other sectors like inflation, exchange rate, which the people think will affect them indirectly. Then the projects which are supposed to be in their interest do not really protect their interests. Very quickly, what are the general responses to you know issues of corruption? Corruption, for example, was typically very important. Indeed, most of the respondents, except in the voter region, said that if you really wanted to rule, you should have a way of dealing with corruption. Give us pragmatic policies to deal with corruption specifically. All right. Thank you very much. That's my colleague Raymond Alcott uh, there. And, uh, he will continue that discussion on the pulse. Uh, well, that's our show for today. Remember, you can catch the show on YouTube if you miss the live broadcast. I'm Arba Kumsen. Join us same time tomorrow. In the meantime... <laughs>